dear colleague, friends, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, I greet you with all the greetings that you like. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. And Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Whenever you are, wherever you are, they pray that you are enjoying your life and your prosperous life, alhamdulillah, in peace and safety. Particularly with what we see at the effect of corona, as well as post-corona, as well as the conflicts in Ukraine and the other parts of the world. It's famine in Somalia, famine in, uh, in Somalia, uh, not famine, a drought in Somalia and some other sub-Saharan countries, Kenya, Tanzania, and everywhere. Today is episode 39 of what we call it Father 5 to 5, and today we'll talk about the second part of social civil clippings or threads. Social civil clippings or threads. Last week or yesterday, we talked about it in Arabic. Today we'll be talking about it in English. But before we start, actually we need to thank our colleague Aya Abu Zainab for preparing for preparing the live and uh, not for preparing the uh, slideshow. Uh, for the people who are not for following on the Zoom, the Zoom link is on the Facebook page and uh, on Instagram. Uh, if you want to follow on the Zoom, you can see all the slides. This is the index slide. We talk about eight subjects. First of all, why are the international Muslim humanitarian organization are attacked and accused of becoming terrorist organization? What, who, and what are who are the icons of hypocrisy in our society? Or the icons of hypocrisy in our society? Okay. Number uh, three, the political buffoons, 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 and the comedy box jokers. Uh, the, the, we worship idols that we and the gods that we created by our own hands. Message from the right holders, which is the poor and the needy, to the inhumane world. Number six, be optimistic. Nations won't be lost with the will of Allah. Number seven, who to be blamed for terrorist attacks. Number eight is a message for young people. These are the eight points which I'm going to talk about it today, inshallah. Number one, why are the international Muslim humanitarian organization are attacked and accused of terrorism? Because they started to become active after the Bosnia war between 1992 and 95, and now they work in most of the conflict zones. And they start to know the field facts and the truth hidden was hidden in the good old days and not being uh, mentioned to us or known to us, number one. They are spreading a new challenging humanitarian culture to challenge the existing humanitarian culture. Knowing the new ways of international humanitarian work and discovering the gaps so they can fill the gaps and know the policy of how to fill such gaps. Outreaching and lobbying the impartial, impartial, impartial global humanitarian decision makers. Number five, discovering new nations and knowing their cultures, moral and faith values, and, uh, and to understand how to deal with their peoples. Discovering humanitarian work is vast, endless. Building and structuring their humanitarian diplomacy. There's something called humanitarian diplomacy uh, as well, uh, which you need to understand it. Knowing the value of soft power of humanitarian work, because the humanitarian work can go to anywhere easily. So this humanitarian organization will be able to go anywhere. Discovering the resources of the host countries to open new avenues for investment. Benefiting from the available information from the security and the intelligence. 
having available information and knowing the key players in these countries, the, uh, the gatekeepers. Building more reliable general awareness among the Muslims, okay? Citizens, far more better and reliable than the state media ones. Gaining the trust of whom? Of people that they serve or government that they actually uh, belong to or government that they serve. Building and presenting new international humanitarian leaders because with the humanitarian work, with the social work, with all this it emerging, it's emerging a new leaders that actually those leaders will become global leaders later on. Creating humanitarian Islamic coalition and the bridging with non-Muslim humanitarian organization or coalition to lobby whom governments, UN, EU, OIC, these of Arab states, as well as others, become to understand the lobbying process. Spreading the culture of volunteerism in their areas amongst Muslim nations who have more than 50% of their population are youth or young people. Okay. Against all the odds who are trying to spoil these resource for resources. Spurred the youth. Number 15, reviving the principles of solidarity and the complementarity based on zakat, sadaqah, and gifts. Number 16, reviving the humanitarian sunnah of qurbani, zakat, al fitr, feed the fasting, eat, dress, aqiqa, and others, and implementing them wherever it's needed most. Number 17, establishing the necessity of waqf, wells, legacies, to give independence to the humanitarian organizations. Number 18, creating more job opportunities to help their governments, their local governments, or the governments that they are serving. Number 19, building an with the institutional culture, the institutional cultural process to change their performance from being reactionary, emotional, and trans traditional into specialized, professional, structured, and institutions. Teaching new methodology of how to react or how to respond to disasters. Number 20, to write the history or rewrite the history of humanitarian work. But unfortunately, some of the Arab and Muslim countries, the governments, are helping those who want to bury the Islamic humanitarian movement alive or to delay and stop its process. Unfortunately, this is the first point. The second point, we talk about icons of hypocrisy in our society, even at the time of the Prophet, وسلم, even at the time from the time of Adam, there's a lot of hypocrites. But the icons of hypocrisy in our society nowadays are 10. A religious scholar who politicized his religion for his social status. Plenty of them. A judge who changed his verdict for money. A ruler who lied to his people until he himself or she herself believed their lies. A teacher who is willingly teaching his students the wrong values. A lying politician, that's number five. A historian who willingly wrote the wrong history. Machiavellian media presenter keep changing its color. Go with the flow wherever it flows. A businessman who is willingly spending his own money on hypocrites or dubious people. A betraying military officer who sold his country to his enemies. And number 10, a police officer who freed the murderer and imprisoned the innocent. A lot of them are amongst us. A lot of them are amongst us. A lot of them are amongst us. Point number three, the political buffoons and comedy box jokers. Who are they? What are their characters? There are plenty, plenty amongst us. 
and they share this characteristic. Let me take you to their characteristics. Number one, they are like the camouflaging lizards who change their skin colors to suit the political situation. Number two, never trusted by nation. They are never trusted by nation before or after or during. They act like parasites that thrive on eating the leftover of dictator's menu. Number four, always ready to please their boss, the dictator, and mislead nations. Number five, they can work with anyone, particularly those who humiliate them. Those who humiliate them. Number six, they use special terminology that confuse the public, shatter the wise ones, and only being understood by the few believers in their community values. Big fat words come on the television or Facebook and others. Nobody understand. Nobody understand it. Number seven, they show the three the three signs of hypocrisy. They say lies, become the sensuous where they are at odds with you or with others, and betray others when entrusted. Three signs of hypocrisy. Number eight. They become the drum players and singers for the country's ruling tyrants all the time. Number nine, they change people's history and role models, fake them, keep changing them. Number 10, they can only live in darkness like bats, never come out in the bright day, in the sunny day. Number 11, they don't have moral value system to follow. Every day, they have different system to make for themselves or to follow different systems. Number 12, they are strictly, they, no, no, sorry, they are sticky, you know, lessage. Ah, they are sticky, argumentative, dogmatic, no, dogma, sticky, argumentative, demagogic, and elusive individuals. Oh. You don't like to be with them. Their voices are louder than their action. Number 13. Devils sometimes become shy when he observes their actions. Number 15. They have no loyalty to their country or to their people all the time. They can sell their mothers, their fathers, their sisters, their wives, their honor, their land. If you want to change them, don't follow them. And the key tool for change is building stronger civil society organization to protect the nation and monitor government performance from those people. Those are what we call them the political buffoons and the comedy box jokers. Point number four, we worship idols and gods that we have created. Alhamdulillah, we keep creating gods and idols and keep worshiping them. And this is a message to a young boy or a young girl who was me, he used to call it, oh, my son. Tell the world that they cannot conquer religion for fact, for fact, for fact. Religion is much stronger than its believers. And, but how about the non-believers? Well, definitely the religion will conquer them. Oh, my son, remember that the world has witnessed the downfall of many powerful states, kingdoms, empires, ideology, such as communism, man-made religions, and atheism, agnosticism, liberal. Libertinism, libertinism, extra, extra. We are witnessing the rocking of individualistic, exclusive, and short lived secularism. But we must have a peaceful coexistence with it because if you want to change, you have to exist to change. Please, my son, take a notice. Take notice in what? In what Sheikh Sha'rawi said. In one of his speeches, Sheikh Shara was one of the great scholars in Egypt, and he said, 
being a religious individual is a part of our nature. A part of our creation, a part of our nature. Since the creation of humanity, individuals must follow a God. Because it's a part of the nature, but they love what? The, such a God who does not restrict their freedom. They would like to, a God that suits them, a God that make everything good for them. This is the reason that people worship idols. They make or gods they create. Well, those like all of you listening to me today, who have sound souls and insights do not have idols or gods to worship. They worship Almighty God, Subhanahu wa Taala, Allah. The sound vision and souls of the believers will lead them to accept such restriction in life to save humanity, restriction in life to save humanity, and again their infinite freedom in the in the life to come these are the people my son please know my son that if the whole world decided to harm an insect they would not be able to do so without allah's permission without allah's permission without allah's permission we have to realize that we were created from a miserable water, ma'un maheen, and we were delivered through the urine, the urine and the blood passage of our mothers. We are now between the miserable water and the urine passage before making ourselves idols and gods. Know your origin. Know what will be when we die. will be gifa dead, rotten, smelly piece of meat. We have to realize that we work, uh, yeah, I mentioned this. Don't lose hope, my son, or weaken your faith and the call upon Allah. The call of a desperate people who have already exhausted all the lawful methods to follow and please him. My son, benevolence is life's character. Please be benevolent, even if you are facing death. Please be benevolent if you are facing death. Point number five is a message coming from the right holders, the poor, the needy, the sick, the displaced, the refugees, the destitute, the orphans, and the widow and others. What, my, what message? come from them to humanity or to the leaders of humanity. Please, this is what after we've seen in Syria and Yemen, in Myanmar, in Iraq, in South Sudan, in the Democratic uh, uh, Republic of Congo, in the Central African Republic, in Ugor, uh, Rohingya, uh, Eritrea, Eritrea refugees, uh, all, 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 many, and in Ukraine, What the message from them is, we do not want your money, food, clothes, schools, hospitals, shelters, medicines, market, jobs, development program, humanitarian policies, because they are inhumane. We want you to do that, to stop, to stop the war, air strikes, dropping of explosive barrels, Killing of innocent people, displacement of civilians, raping of young women and girls and even young boys, frightening the children, torturing the disabled, foreign interference in our home affairs, and destroying our future. That's what we want from you. We don't want money from you. We can live without your money if you do, if you do that. Because, as right holders, we can build our peace communities, nation, future generations, cultures, social and moral values. We can do it. We have the ability to do it. Why should we wait for you to do that for us? We don't want 
the help of those who cry on our suffering, but, done, but do not treat its root causes and do nothing. Years passed by, and you are still discussing the fate of those who are already in the graveyard of life, but are not making dignified life for others to live. We had enough lies, hypocrisy, and deceiving. Stop playing with the dreams of humans. That is, if we have humans amongst us. This is the message coming from the right holders, which are the poor, to the decision makers. Point number six was another message to be optimistic. We cannot live without being optimistic. We cannot live, and we'll never be able to live. Nations won't be lost with the will of Allah. We all know who failed these poor nations and led to the loss of the resources and displaced their people and humiliate their dignities. Most of them, unfortunately, are Arabs and Muslims. Who made that? Because we turn our back, we turn our back to them. It's not new. This is not new. But we did that to Palestinian before, Syrian, and now to Yemeni, and we'll do it to the Ukrainian, as we did it to the African, and Yugor, and Rohingya, and everybody. We're doing it. We're doing it all the time. This is happening because of the ignorance of the religious and political leaders, the superficial and simple research-based evidence, and the intellectual writings and discussion, the wrong and dubious messages delivered by media, and the weak or absence of effective civil society organization. This was the main reason. The ignorance of so-called Muslim leaders, I'm just focusing on this, who did a fatal mistake we limited Islam into what we call it nowadays, political Islam. Ah! Oh. And did not talk about the civil Islam. This was unfortunately because their superficial, simple education, then letting their followers to echo terminologies which they don't understand their meaning. Terminology could be thrown to us from the north, from the south, from the west, and from the east, and they follow it. Politics and its institution are mere a small part of our vast civil society sector. Politics, political parties are a small part of the civil society sector. But we limited our message to what we call political Islam, not the civil Islam. Civil Islam is more wider, comprehensive, to include others, like art, philosophy, culture, history, diplomacy, all this. The same leaders reduced the work of civil such organization into, into what? It's traditional charitable activities which does not fit the current climate of our life. And this is what we are facing nowadays. But be optimistic, my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister, my colleague, my friend. We don't realize that the sacredness, sacredness see this for, the, for you Muslims again, sacredness of Muslim is more important than the sacredness of Kaaba. And this is the Prophet and you don't suspect him don't have a bad feeling about him or her. And the non-Muslim citizen have equal responsibility and rights, duties, and roles to play in our country, collective country. To that played by the fellow Muslim citizen. They are same. In citizenship, they are the same. 
and responsibility, they are the same. And actually, duties, they are the same. Solution is, we have to acknowledge that we are their first enemy and not others. Even if we think that others have their own dubious plans against them. Our eyes do not see. You see, you and me, our eyes, the, my eye does not see the killing germs penetrating my body. And our bodies do not become sick, then die unless, unless, unless our immune mechanisms are weak and cannot defend them. So the immune mechanism should be from inside, not from outside. So what to do? How many steps? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, seven or eight points. Seven or eight points. And number one, communication discussion and reconciliation with different political opponents, religious groups, and sects. They are closer to us in our country than anybody from outside. Number two, respect other political opinions, other religious opinion, other social values. Those who want to build society have to bridge the indifferences between it is torn and divided social fabric. Say it again, those who want to build society have to bridge the indifferences between the, its torn and divided social fabrics. Number three, understand the local societal needs and their connection to the regional, international powers because we don't live in what? In the middle of the dark ages. But we live in the high technology space race, social media era. People still actually want to jump on a horseback to fight a plane. Very nice. Knowing the importance, the important roles played by the young women and people. We ignore young children, we ignore young people, we ignore, young, we ignore women. They are more than 70% of the society, but we ignore them. The roles of other societal components as private sector, think tanks, research institute, civil society organization, and others. We need to invest in education, 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 then culture, arts, history, climate, sports, philosophy, and reasoning. Reasoning, very important. Reasoning of the creation of civilization. And last and not least, be aware for the people who keep borrowing money or the people who come actually drowning their countries in debt. Be aware that money is a part of the solution, but not the solution. Money is a part of the solution, but not the solution. The solution is in the reconciliation between different factions of the Arab and Muslim societies. As Umm Kalsum, Rahmatullah Ali, Umm Kalsum was one of the greatest singers in the history of Arab world, used to say, Al-Ab fiku yaf habayibku, amma al-hub yaruh alayh. You say, the wrong is in you, leaders, and those who follow you, followers, but love, love Islam and the Arab heritage, is what we offer our souls for. Offer our souls for our religion, for our Islam, for our Arab heritage and Islamic heritage. This is number six, point number six. Point number seven, whom to blame, to be blamed for the terrorist attacks. We are having good discussion all the time, everywhere, but we need a sustainable solid solidarity in the action we take. There's no action. Oh, happened, oh, happened. But what's the action? What's next? Nothing. Now we realize, that we have no friends, ignorant imams and leaders who do not speak the local languages and do not know their communities, cultures, as well as local culture. Now we realize 
that we ignored the role of young people and women. Now we realize that we are not transparent enough, inclusive enough, and fair enough to everyone. Number three, now we realize that we have political leaders, they promote the Jamaat, political parties, not Muslim leaders to unite the Muslim community. Now we realize, which is number four, that we have bad governance in most of our Muslim organization and mosques. Now we realize that the community, Muslim community, do not trust its traditional leaders. Number six, now we realize that why we became part of the problem, not the solution itself. Number seven, now we realize that we do not learn or we did not learn from September 11th, 2001, Madrid bombing 2004, London underground bombing uh, 2005, Nairobi 2014, Paris, Charlie Hebdo 2015. Also, we do not have a good relationship with our current governments. Now we realize that we have no relationship with the mainstream media. Now we realize that we don't know the digital world and the power of social media. Now we realize that we have failed our religion, our communities, our countries, our children. Now we realize what after that? Let us stop talking. Even if we lose this phase, let us forget our egos and show humility. Let us build think tanks and research institutions owned by community, not individuals or jamaat or political parties, owned by civil, as a civil society organization. Let us win the trust of governments, our governments, political parties, state institutions, and public as well. Let us donate our wealth to build a stronger civil society sector. Let us create community advocacy and pressure groups. Let us call for our unity and make it our concern. Let us build bridges with other communities. Let us connect with the mainstream media. Let us stop investing in buildings and bricks and invest in people. Let us believe that we are citizens of our country. We're not foreigners to our country. Or not visitors in our countries. Let us stop being racist inside mosques, Muslim organization, synagogue, or churches. Let us tackle the marriage and, div and divorce problem within our communities. Let us come out of our cocoons and live with our neighbors. Let us stop crashing, no, stop cursing, sorry. Stop cursing and making jokes of other faiths and religions. Let us destroy our spider web before the black spider can come and kill us all. The latest list is long, but let us <coughs> agree to start with one or two objectives and have a quick impact results to win the community trust and steadily build our community building blocks. Say it again. Let us, the let us list is long, but let us agree to start with one or two objectives and to have a quick impact results to win the community trust and steadily build our community building blocks. This is number seven. The last is the message to the young people. I have discussed with you 14 points in this, in today and last week. Now, uh, I have discussed with you these points during the past two weeks. Presenting to you a new challenge. A new, you, you won't meet me? Challenge me and challenge you. I'll challenge you. Keep challenging you, whether on Instagram or in Facebook or in uh, Zoom. New challenge, which is building trust in your hearts 
and to be capable of that, what I'm going to read. You have to do that. Understanding what you read, be aware of what you say, write what you are conscious of, eat what you plant, wear what you weave, blend what you harvest, drive what you manufacture, sleep in what you upholstered, upholstered. listen to what you compose, sing your poems, Admire what you draw. Present proudly what you engrave. Spread your message to everyone you want. And leave for humanity an impressive civilization. This is if you have trust in yourself, your religion, your culture, your country, your history, and your future. The points we discussed last week and today, uh, they're mentioned here, but I'll say them again, the concept of maintain work, societal definitions, for the message for the young people uh, to learn. You can see the talk of last week, uh, public diplomacy, uh, social and political awareness, pyramid, the fundamentals of great nation or state, why, uh, and, and the seven points which I mentioned them today, which is, International, why are the international Muslim humanitarian organizations are attacked? And, 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 and. What I need now from you, young people, what I need now from you, young people, is trust that's built on what? Two things Al Ilm Wal Iman, on knowledge and faith. Have this trust in yourself which is built on knowledge and faith, which is established in the validity of your belief, values, morals, histories, culture, the love of your homelands, country, civilizations created by your ancestors. If there is such a firm trust based on knowledge and faith, you will, mashallah, be capable to at, of achieving a lot as well as the following. The trust has to be on the foundation of faith and knowledge. You do the following. Number one, we'll be ahead of other people with science and scientific knowledge. You precede nations with thoughts, opinions, and philosophy that you have. Because you have the trust, you have the knowledge, you have the iman. You will set rules for humanity to protect it from the arrogance of it is tyrants and the, unjust, the injustice of its people. That's what you are going to do for others. You will create civilizations that leads history to stand still in front of its achievements. See, this is when you have your trust in yourself based on knowledge and iman. I don't want you, young people, to be depressed due to the number of events happening around the world, particularly in Arab nation to Muslim minorities. I don't want you, young people, to be depressed due to the falling masks of democracy, justice, equality, rights, freedoms, fraternity, societal ignorance, who are who call themselves developed or civilized countries. Those people used to fool us in the past. Oh, they are civilized, more civilized than us, more advanced than us. No. Now it becomes clear. I don't want you to be depressed due to the lies of the media, the hypocrisy of some religious representatives, the fraud or the corruption of the politicians, the fabrication of political parties, the inability of religious groups, the weakness and the dependence of the national governments on foreign actors, the weakness of the international and regional institutions. Never become depressed, even 
if you face all this. I don't want you to become, to resemble, sorry, to resemble the enemies, to be like them. No. Have your own values. To resemble the enemy's values, principles, religious ethics, human civilization, or societal renaissance. Leave it. Leave it for them. You are what you are with your value, with your belief, with your history, with your morality, and all this. I don't want you to be influenced by the Islamophobia. Don't let Islamophobia to break your back. Don't let the philosophy of war and terror to break your back. Don't let the drying up of your resources by the bank industry or closing all your bank accounts to break your back. No. Keep working. Keep trying. Keep facing the challenges and keep overcoming the challenges. Dear young people, be aware of not losing hope, not losing hope, and gathering your communities, treating the, treating the wounds of your nation, building the future of your generation, creating the pillars of your renaissance, and installing the foundation of the civilization for your peoples, not your people, your peoples globally. Be aware of not. Be aware of not kneeling to a human being, a creature, or anything else. Kneeling only is to be for Allah, for God. Be aware of saying words that you don't believe in or defend. Ethics that does not exist. Be aware of not neglecting science, knowledge, extrapolation, inferences, guidance, research, and study as they are the key tools in building renaissances and constructing civilizations. Be aware of not ignoring the history as it is the knowledge for generations which rules and creates the path for societal change and building future generations. History, very important. History, very important. History, very important. Be aware of not undermining the family foundation system, as the family is the most important societal component, where on its shoulders we build all the nation's civilizations. The mother is the school that teaches generations to come. And the father is the beacon who lights the way for the family to protect and elevate it. Without a family, there is no societies, civilization built or civilization built. Be, be aware of not excessively loving your opinions, not excessively loving your opinions, excessively supporting your sheikhs and leaders at the excessive Extra, as the excessive ex, exaggeration of anything is disliked by everybody. Even if it was in the support of those who are truthful and right. As it leads to what? To dead hearts. Personalizes the issue and making your message subjective and personal. Whereas our message is not subjective or personal. Our message is always inclusive, eternal, continuous for all societies in every time and place. Excessiveness and exaggeration makes others arrogant and fanatical about their opinion and hate the message you are calling for. Hate your messengers and even hate you. This will inevitably lead to societal division, which we don't want it to happen. From the excessiveness of love and exaggeration of love. Be aware not being, of not being the first to trust a punk. If a punk comes with information, investigate first so you don't harm people out of ignorance then regret 
your action. Don't mistrust the honest people. As the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, nickname was the honest and faithful. Don't mistrust the honest people. Nowadays, people mistrust the honest and trust the deceiver, and people accept uh, say anything from those punk. Be aware of not standing up for truth. Look for truth. Defend the rights holders. Frame laws that lift the curse and the trouble of the people in the globe. Truth is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And be sure to be with Allah whenever and whenever, wherever you are. Be aware of oppressing a human being. Of, yeah, don't ever oppress human being. Never torturing animals, perishing a bird, removing a plant. Even if a human is not a Muslim from your religion, as Allah SWT honored him or her by making them his successor. Respect them, protect them, dignify them. And persons believes who are not Muslims, and religion is left for them under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be accountable for it by the Creator, not by you. Don't make religion, culture, language, race, and gender an excuse for being unjust to others. Injustice will become darkness for you and me on the day of judgment. Allah has forbidden injustice to himself and made it forbidden among us. Be aware to live for a message you spread and deliver, a value you implant, an awareness that can benefit people around the globe. As awareness is and was the main pillar in the message of every prophet, messenger, and reformer who wanted to benefit their societies. Awareness and realization. Dear young people, to conclude, dear young people, we are in between the, a system of I don't want you and the other part be aware of. And between these two, through them, we can build with you the prospects for the future of the nation. And I am confident in you and I trust you. And I know and I believe that you are capable of doing that. If we commit ourselves to implementing the standard of these two systems based on the foundation of knowledge and faith that will enable us to build societies which brings us all together with all the people of humanity without looking at differences between our ethnicity, cultural, and religious differences. The world can accommodate us and more. The world is more, is, 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 can accommodate more than 8 billion people. Because Allah knows that for every individual, animal, or birds, or any creation, Allah is putting, letting them to put their feet on this world, they have a sustenance for them from underneath their feet or from the sky. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Sorry of having this heavy uh, eight points, but if you connect the two talks, the talk of this week and talk of last week, which you call it, uh, which you call both of them, uh, both of them, if you go to the YouTube now, uh, uh, social civil clippings and shreds. Very, very a strange name, but that's what we, what I called it. Thank you very much. Uh, may Allah bless you. And Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, might be able to see you next week again, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.